Hi, welcome to Curtis Stage Video Tutorials. Today's tutorial is on using the Type Tool in Photoshop, and it's going to be part one. The things we're going to focus on in this tutorial are creating a new layer, deleting a type layer. In fact, we're just going to be talking about layers in general a little bit with type. We're we'll talking about the options bar for quick edits, doing things such as sizing, color, font choice, style. So we'll be using the Move Tool, which is the arrow tool, transforming type, editing single words or letters with the warp tool. All right, so let's get started. All right, so now we're here in Photoshop and I have a new document that's a basic just white background document, five by five inches um, with a 200 resolution. And I'm gonna go over to the toolbar and select my type tool. It's a letter T here on the toolbar. If I hold my mouse down on it, you'll see that there are some other tools that are also type tools within this panel. We just want the horizontal type tool for today. So I'm gonna select that. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is you'll notice that there's an options bar up at the top of Photoshop. It's going to talk to us about, it's going to tell us about things like the type of font that we're picking, the uh, style of the font, the size of the font, and then some other uh, options over here, which we'll talk about in a second. First thing I want to do is make sure that my type color is a dark color for this white background. So I clicked on, if you notice, I'll just click right here, on the little color icon. And I'll get the color picker to come up. And I'm going to select black from this color picker and click OK. Now we'll go and talk about the selection and the size here in a second of what kind of type we want and its size. But you'll notice when I hover my mouse over the canvas, it's going to give me this blinking insertion marker when I click on the canvas. So as soon as I click on the canvas, it's saying, hey, what would you like to type? And it also added a layer for me in the layers panel. It's kind of generic, it just says layer one. We'll get to that in a second. We can rename that and everything. If I type something on this canvas, you'll see that it's gonna type with the existing font that was in the options bar. So I haven't changed anything yet. Photoshop remembers the last font that you used when you were in Photoshop. So in my case, this was a font that I had downloaded called Railway that I like, and it's gonna remember that same font. Now let's say I want to switch this font. Let's say this is not a font that I want. I want to use something else. I can go up to my options bar and I can pick any font from my Macintosh fonts, or if you're on a PC, same thing. So, you know, your computer comes loaded with fonts, but you can also add more fonts as well. And we'll talk about that in part two of this tutorial. So if I wanted to switch you'll notice that when I went here and I said, okay, well, I'd like to switch to Avenir, let's say. Well, my type didn't change on my canvas. It's because I have to highlight the text. So if I take my cursor, my mouse, and I highlight the text, then I can edit the text in the options bar. So once I highlight that, and you know it's highlighted because it's black. Um, here's, here's when it's not highlighted, and then here's when it is highlighted. So all I have to do is highlight the text, and then I can go here and I can change it to any kind of font that I want. So if I want to switch a font, you'll see how it changes. So I switch that up in the options bar, and then it's going to change on my canvas. The same thing is true if I want to change the font style. So in this case, I've got a possibility of doing bold or regular. And with a lot of fonts, you'll see different font styles. So I can go in here and I'll say, okay, I want to do noteworthy. And I I want to see what their styles are here. Well, it's got light and it's got bold. So if I pick light, you'll see how the font gets skinnier. And if I pick bold, the font gets a little thicker there. The options bar also allows me to change the size of the font on my canvas. And I can do it one of two ways. I can pull this little, this pull out menu by clicking this little tiny arrow here. And you see it can goes up to 72 points. So I can do that. Or, better yet, I can hover my mouse over these two T's, and if I hover to, and I drag to the right, you'll see that my font gets bigger on the canvas, and if I drag to the left, you'll see that the font gets smaller. So I can also, I guess there's a third way, I can hand type what size and points that I want in there too. So if I enter the number right in this box right here, it'll allow me to change the font size as well. I like using this little dragger quite a bit, but if you need to be precise, you may want to hand type that. Um, number of points in here. So let's say I needed 125 exactly. Um, this little box right here will give me a couple options on, uh, well you can see what they say, uh, sharp to smooth in terms of the way the font is handled, 
Uh, if you look closely at the edges, you'll see the difference when you do this. And this is especially good for web. I usually keep this on smooth for any printing. Uh, right next to this is the option to change uh, where my type, type is aligned, if it's on the aligned on the left or the right or in center. And we'll deal with this in part two of our tutorial when we get to the character panel. All right, so I want to change this color, let's say. Well, I've already clicked off of it, so I'm going to highlight it again. And if I click my little color box right here, after I've typed my text, I can change the color. So if I click right up here in the color picker and pick red, it will change the color on my canvas. I also can color pick. Let's say there was something else on my canvas that had a color in it. I could notice how there's a little color picker right here, a little eyedropper tool. If I had some other object on my canvas, I could color pick from that and the color would change immediately. So I can go through here and pick whatever color I want for my canvas. I'm going to click OK to that. Now once I like this type, let's say this is what I want on my screen, I've got two options to click right up here. Well, I can check mark would apply. This would accept the text uh, that I've created, a little check mark. And then I've got this text and I can now go on from there. I'm going to undo that. Let's say I go back in here and I don't want the text at all. Any changes that I made, I can click the don't apply and that would have an effect there. So I can either pick the check mark or the don't apply. You also see there's a new 3D button right in here and we'll talk about that in part two. So once I've applied my text and I like what I've got, so I went back to my railway font here, then let's look over at the uh, layers panel. Most of the time it's going to give you, in the, in the type layer itself, it's going to show the name or it's going to put a word in there that you typed on your screen. That's pretty convenient. I can always change that by double clicking the word. So in this case it was wow and I can change this to um, whatever I want in here. And then I just click and then it's, it's that. It doesn't change my type on my canvas, it just changes the type layer name. Now if I want to add more type to this canvas, I can. Uh, and, but what I want to do, I want to make sure that I do is I want to go to my arrow tool first click off of my type and then click on my type tool because what will happen is I don't want to add maybe to this type existing type layer. I want to maybe add a new type layer. And as soon as I click on my canvas and get my insertion um, little uh, icon here with a blinking insertion marker, you'll notice that once I click on my canvas, I'm going to get a layer one as well. Now a lot of people will accidentally click on their canvas, not do anything with this, and then go back and maybe move something around. So I didn't add any type and look at how it still keeps my layer one type tool. And then they go back here and add another layer. And then you've got multiple random type layers and, and they don't really display on your page. It's not gonna do anything. It's not necessarily bad for your photo, Photoshop document, but it does make it a little bit messy if you're trying to organize a graphic design project. So if I want to delete this type layer, I could drag it simply right down to the bottom of my layers panel to the trash can. There we go. I could take this right down to the bottom of the layers panel to the trash can, and I could delete both those layers. Let me add a layer again. So I'm going to click on my, on my canvas with my type tool, and I can create something else on here. Let's see some sort of text on here. Now let's say... I was spelling something and I spelled something wrong. Well, I want to just take that J out of there. So I have a new type layer and it hasn't named it yet for me because I haven't, um, I haven't accepted this type yet by hitting the check mark up here. But uh, look what I've got here. I've got this J in here. I wanted to spell yeah and I've got this J here. Well, I can highlight just that J by itself. I could highlight the whole line, of course, and do what all the things we were talking about before, expanding contracting the text, making it smaller, change the font, change the font size and the color. So I can do all that stuff. But if I just want to highlight one piece of the text, I can. And then I can hit delete on my keyboard to get rid of that. So now I got rid of that spelling error. Okay, so if I want to highlight this and um, change any of the items in here, I can, like we talked about. But I can also do one more thing. I can also do warping with this. Uh, with this options bar. So let's look at the warp tool. If I click up here on the warp tool, it's going to give me a little dialog box. 
And the style, I have to pick a style on here, and as soon as I, I click the word none, you're going to see a pull-out menu, and I can see a bunch of different styles, and it's going to give me a preview in my canvas, which is very nice. And I can simply just slide these little bars around and kind of play with them and see what they do to create different effects. So you can see there's a lot of different ones in here. Here's flag, and I can bend this text, and it's going to give me a live preview of it, which is really nice. Say I like this, I just click OK to that, and I hit the check mark up here in Photoshop to apply any of the changes that I've made to this type. As soon as I do that, my layers panel will tell me two things. It's going to give me the name of the type layer. By default, it's going to use the first word that I typed. And it's going to give me this other icon, which shows that I've used the warp tool. And I can go and re-edit this. This is really nice. If I double click this, it will let me re-edit the type tool. So I can go, actually I have to go, it looks like I have to go back up to the options bar to do that. So if I go back to the, up to the options bar, I can re-edit this type tool if I didn't like exactly what I did. So nothing set in stone, which is very nice. I can reorder these font layers if I go to my black arrow tool or my gray arrow tool now in Photoshop CS6. If I go to my arrow tool, I can reorder these layers. Well, what's the importance of that? Oh, it's just like any other layer in Photoshop you can set one layer on top of another in a graphic design uh, project, let's say. And if I want to take this layer and I want to move it below that layer, you can see how changing the layer stack order here in my layers panel will change the way it looks like, just like any other layer in Photoshop. The other great thing in Photoshop that you'll notice is that these layers are really transparent layers. So I'll click my background layer off of my layers panel and you'll notice that I've got a transparency here and all these layers are transparent. This is great for web if you're slicing text out for the web and you don't want to bring any white with you or background color with you. You just want transparency, but you want a cool font for maybe, let's say, a navigation bar or something like that. You could do that. So this, these layers all come by default with no color around the type. So let me turn my background layer back on. All right, like I said before, moving the type around our canvas is really easy. I go to my Move tool on the toolbar, and I can grab the type and move it around. Now, what if I wanted to do some other things? Let's say I wanted to change this type in terms of rotate it or things like that. Well, I can use the Transform tool. Command-T is the keyboard shortcut on a Mac for Transform, and Control-T on a PC. And you'll notice that I'll get the transform tool dialog box or um, bounding box that comes open. And if I hover my mouse to one of the edges of this, now I probably don't want to size this here. I'd rather size this with the, type, with the options bar because it could distort your text in terms of uh, making it pixelated. So I size that up and it may give me some distorted edges. So I'd rather do that sizing within the options bar or the characters panel, which we're going to talk about in part two. So I wouldn't want to do that. I'm going to Command Z a couple times here. I'm going to go to the Type uh, Transform tool again. But the things that I can do are I can turn this. I can rotate it by dragging my mouse towards one of the corners here. And you can see that I can rotate my text. So the text doesn't have to be in a straight line using this um, Transform tool or using Type. Um, there is no kind of freeform type tool uh, in Photoshop. You can do that in Illustrator. But in Photoshop, we don't really have a freeform transform, uh, type tool. So I can't draw type along a path as well as I can with, with Illustrator. So that would be one of the, the reasons why we'd want to use Illustrator. Okay, so that wraps up part one of fonts in Photoshop. So hopefully you'll join me for part two. We'll talk about the character panel, talk about importing fonts into Photoshop and using those. We'll also talk about breaking fonts apart and making them graphic images so we'll rosterize fonts in part two. All right, hope to see you there. Bye-bye.